In lesson four of our chapter on human health and environmental risk, we're talking about physical hazards, which predominantly include natural disasters. So the big four physical hazards are earthquakes, volcanoes, storms, and avalanches. When it comes to earthquakes, you might remember the earthquake um, that happened in Haiti in 2010. It was a 7.0 on the Richter scale. The Richter scale is the most common way that we measure earthquake strength, but there is actually another scale that doesn't measure the strength of the earthquake, but measures the damage of the earthquake. So that's kind of interesting. Um, thousands of people were actually killed and injured in Haiti and buildings collapsed and infrastructure was destroyed. And that led to a lot of problems. Um, Without infrastructure, there was no clean water or sanitation, and uh, there was a tremendous amount of flooding that resulted um, due to deforestation in Haiti. There's almost no trees. They've been cut down to use as fuel for um, cooking. Um, and so there was massive mudslides that wiped out whole towns um, and allowed rivers to flood. And that led to outbreaks of cholera um, and malaria and other mosquito-borne illnesses. So there's really a lot of cascade events that happen from this earthquake. One of the biggest vulnerabilities that humans have to earthquakes is when buildings are not uh, built to a code designed to withstand earthquakes. So in the United States, um, we have a pretty strong code, particularly in places like California that are at risk of earthquakes. And so they're able, they're built to be able to withstand earthquakes of a certain um, amount on the Richter scale. But we've had, that's because of major earthquakes that destroyed areas like San Francisco back in the early 1900s. So uh, we kind of learned from that and, and changed how we did things. And just to give you a sense, you might remember the Ring of Fire from maybe in middle school or, or sometime. Um, but this is an area where the tectonic plates um, are just in such a way that there's very high earthquake and actually also volcano activity in these areas. And you'll notice it goes along the western uh, seaboard of the United States and out across the Alaskan archipelago um, and over to Russia and down along China, and, uh, Ind Indonesia, out here into the French Tonga, um, and of course all the way over to uh, the west coast of South America. So these are the places where you're most likely to see earthquake and volcanic activity. But there are other fault lines that generate earthquakes and volcanoes, and one of those, of course, was right uh, in Haiti. And so here's the island of Hispaniola with uh, the Dominican Republic on the east side and Haiti on the west side. Even in this map, you can actually see that it's greener on the Dominican side and browner on the Haiti side due to the deforestation. And you can see the two fault lines here. Um, and this fault line was responsible for that earthquake. So earthquakes happen um, because the Earth's crust is divided up into these tectonic plates that float on a molten crust. So they're kind of gliding along on convection currents, either moving them away from each other or towards each other. Um, and some of them actually move alongside each other. And those transform faults, they are where you are most likely to see earthquakes. Um, because when they're trying to slide past each other, they're, they're really rough. And so there's a lot of friction and it can be very hard for the plates. They don't just slide easily past. So they stick and stress and tension build up. And stress and tension are really just other words for energy, potential energy. And eventually that energy gets high enough that it just snaps the plates past each other. It's a very sudden movement. Um, and that's the earthquake. And it can cause land to move or drop. Um, you can get ground sink, which is when the land just drops. Um, certain kinds of soils, if they have a high water content, can actually liquefy. Uh, it's called liquefaction, and that's one of the things that causes buildings to just, like, collapse. Um, you can get landslides, especially in areas that don't have good 
tree coverage to help hold the soil in place. Um, you can get tsunamis um, and you can also have flooding. Um, sometimes rivers are redirected as a result of changes um, in land due to the earthquake and that can lead to flooding. So you can also get earthquakes at convergent and divergent faults. Those earthquakes are often associated with volcanic activity specifically. Um, and again, I showed you the ring of fire. So that's just a place where you'd expect um, so we have a hard time predicting earthquakes, um, but we have a good idea of where earthquakes might happen. So we don't know when they'll happen, and we it's difficult to warn people, which is why there's often high death rates, but we, we often do know where they might happen. So that gives us a sense of maybe those are places we should have better codes. Volcanoes are another one of the big physical hazards. Um, again, we're going to see these at convergent and divergent faults between the tectonic plates, so where tectonic plates are crashing into each other um, and one is going underneath the other or where plates are moving away from one another and molten material is coming up from Earth's uh, deep crust. Um, volcanoes can be different. Some of them emit ash and gas, and that gas can travel very rapidly and literally suffocate people where they stand, like in Pompeii. Um, or they can spew lava, like in Hawaii, where it slowly moves down the mountain and creates um, new land. Um, or it can be a combination of all of those things. Um, volcanoes can disrupt air travel, like a, an explosion or a volcanic eruption that happened in Iceland, shut down air travel for 10 days. Um, it can destroy entire ecosystems. That's what you're seeing over here. This is Mount St. Helens um, in the northwest United States, and this is a picture of the eruption. You can see this car buried in the ash and in this forest, and this is today, so it's made a comeback, but what, what's not here, there are actually pictures of miles where the force of the eruption literally snapped the trees off right at their base and they're just all laying sideways. So these volcanic eruptions can be quite powerful. So they can wipe out towns and they can even alter climate. Sometimes the amount of ash that goes into the atmosphere actually blocks out the sun for up to a year or two and it can cause the whole planet to cool down. Um, this actually happened in the Middle Ages and led to famine um, due to the change in weather and the crops failing as a result. The third one is storms. Uh, we know a little bit about these. So tornadoes, which we've been hearing a lot about lately, if you pay attention to the news, places like Nashville um, have been hit with pretty significant um, high force tornadoes. We have Tornado Alley that kind of runs through the Dust Bowl of the United States. They hit fast with very little warning, and as a result, they can be quite deadly. Um, Florida actually has more tornadoes than any other state. Um, including those states in Tornado Alley, but our tornadoes tend to be F1s, which are relatively weak tornadoes, kind of like the water spouts that we might see, whereas in Tornado Alley, they can have these very strong F5 um, deadly tornadoes that just rip apart houses and lift cars and that kind of thing. Um, hurricanes, uh, obviously we know lots about this, but the good thing about hurricanes is we often get lots of advanced warning. Sometimes we don't know exactly where it's go going to go, so we plan that we think it's coming, and then at the last minute it might divert, which is not really a bad thing. Um, better than that you didn't know it was coming. Um, they can still be really deadly, as, as you all know. Um, we think about the one that hit the Bahamas or hit um, New Orleans. Um, and one of the biggest problems with hurricanes is actually the resulting storm surge when our coastlines um, are not when we when human development has destroyed the tidal marshes and the mangrove swamps, it puts us at real risk for storm surge because those kinds of things protect us from storm surge. And the storm surge is often what causes a lot of the damage in addition to high winds and sometimes tornadoes that show up in hurricanes. The last kind of storm is a thunderstorm. I know that might sound kind of funny, like really, that's a hazard, but people really do get hit by lightning. Um, not that often, but more often than you might think, but also lightning can trigger forest fires and those wildfires can often spread out of control. Also, you can get hail, which can be quite damaging to structures and cars, and of course, flooding. Thunderstorms often come with very heavy rain as we experience here in Florida, and that flooding can lead to loss of life and loss of infrastructure. And the last physical hazard or natural disaster is 
is avalanches. Um, so these are just masses of sliding snow, and there are kind of particular conditions that lead or increase the risk um, of avalanches. Anything greater than a 30 uh, degree slope, so steep slopes with unstable snowpacks, which is when you have, might have like weak soft snow covered by really dense, heavy, wet snow, um, and then maybe like a frozen layer and then another layer, that can make the snowpack really unstable because it, one layer could slide past another. Um, poor weather conditions, so warming weather, for example, can increase the risk of avalanche um, and also um, sometimes there are triggers so if there's like a small um, a smaller avalanche can trigger a much larger avalanche as that vibration travels up the mountain through the snowpack so those are our four big physical hazards or natural disasters that we're going to talk about and this actually wraps up this chapter on environmental health and environmental risk.